After building the vinyl album stand, I was asked to design and build a simple two-level shelf to store some CDs for the same client. The shelf would be made out of ash and stained and finished to match the vinyl album stand. This was a fairly straightforward build, but I ran into some problems that I had to solve along the way, which I'll share with you during the video. Let's get to the build. My plan was to make the shelf out of solid ash, as I had some 8 quarter boards still left in the shop. I rough sized everything then went to resaw them on the bandsaw. I knew these boards were not ideal for resawing due to the grain pattern, but in previous projects they seemed super stable. But as I was about to find out, that was not the case for this board. As you can hear, as soon as my bandsaw blade cut into the board, it started cupping and putting pressure on the blade. So much, in fact, I had to work to get the blade back out of the wood. You can see it was quite a struggle. I was happy to be able to finally free it from the bandsaw blade. You can see just how tight that board was cupping at the bottom and top of the saw curve. I did not go into this project with a plan B, but I did happen to have a half sheet of ash plywood left over from that same vinyl album stand project. And so that was more than enough to make the, the main components out of plywood. This required a minor change in the design and to my build plan, but nothing major. Before you get carried away in the comments, I apologize for the specks of dust on some of the video. It appears as though I just have a dirty camera lens. I do clean my lens frequently. I didn't realize until later I actually had dust on the sensor inside of my camera. So I was able to fix it, but I apologize. I ripped the pieces to rough dimension at the table saw, then made some adjustments to rip them to final width. Everything was cut to final length on the miter saw. You can see here a small piece of an ear popped up and it was large enough I wanted to repair it. This is why I always keep uh, plastic ziplocs that various hardware is shipped in. I just slip my finger into the plastic bag, apply some CA glue, and hold it down until it cures. Finishing up the dimensioning of the sides, I moved on to edge banding. This obviously was not something I planned for when I thought this would be made of hardwood, but like the plywood, I happen to have plenty of ash edge banding left over from the vinyl album stand project. Here you can see I accidentally put edge banding on the end of one of the shelves, then realized it would not be needed as this part is butted up against the side piece. Fortunately, it comes off just as easy as it goes on. I don't have a full bench with a vise yet, so this was my solution for holding longer boards on their edge. Here I am just laying out where the top, bottom, and center shelves will sit so I can lay out my cut lines for the domino. You will see me using my woodpecker rulers and my brass setup bars often as I like to use a measuring tape as little as possible. Now it is time for the dominoes. I'm using my Domino XL along with one of my favorite little gadgets, the adapter from Seneca Woodworking that allows me to use the full range of domino cutters in all sizes. I 
cut mortises in the sides for the top and bottom shelf. Then set up to cut two mortises for the middle shelf. I was careful to always mark the side I had to use as a reference for the domino. Next we're matching mortises in the ends of each of the three shelf pieces. I used the table saw to cut grooves in the top and bottom shelf to accept the plywood back. Now I had to mark the location of the evenly spaced shelf dividers. These would be made out of solid ash. I routed the slots using a trim router and a quarter inch spiral bit and a simple combination square as a guide. It did not matter if I was exactly on the line as long as once I made my first dado, the rest were transferred to the same locations on the other pieces. Once those were complete, I did a quick dry assembly to determine the final dimensions of the shelf dividers. The dividers were then planed to final thickness and cut to final dimension to ensure a snug fit. I now had a square divider that needed to fit flush against the front of the slot, so I chiseled out a square edge for each dado. Alright. So these dividers are actually kind of a structural part of this project, um, primarily just dividers. But I've got a couple things going on with the plywood here. Um, the bottom piece, it's just the slightest bow. It's actually pretty good, quarter inch. And then the top piece, it's just a slight bow as well. So I've got to get these dividers exact so it can help hold everything square. See what happens. I clamped the bottom shelf flat to the work surface, then made spacers out of scrap wood to ensure the shelves remain parallel and square. I could then get the final dimension for the dividers, and once glued up, everything would fit properly. Another dry assembly to make sure all was well, and everything got sanded up to 180 grit. To make cleanup easier, I decided to tape around each of the divider glue joints. I then used the epoxy with a long open time to complete the assembly. After an overnight cure, I removed the clamps and tape and cut the back to its final dimension. As I almost always do prior to finishing plywood, I thinned out some shellac to use as a sealer and applied this to all components of the shelf. Next was to stain everything using matching stain from the vinyl album stain project. This was General Finish's antique walnut gel stain. Goes on pretty easy, but I have learned not to work with too large of an area at one time as it does start to get tacky rather quickly.
After driving overnight, I applied two coats of Osmo Pollux oil. I applied it with a 3M white pad and then allow it to sit for about 10 minutes before I wipe it with a rag. So here was another problem I encountered that was rather strange. Take a look as I'm applying the Pollux oil. Magically, a bright white spot appeared that was not noticeable at all with the gel stain over it. I'm not sure what this was, but wanted to show you how easy it is to repair something with this finish on it. The spot didn't appear to be some sort of wood filler or anything that I could really identify, so I have no idea what it was. If you have any thoughts, please let me know in the comments below. I continued applying the Pollux and let it cure overnight. And the next day I sanded over this small spot, applied more stain, let that dry, and applied more Pollux. Problem solved. The last assembly step was to epoxy the back in place and let that dry overnight. The final part of the finishing process is to wipe the cured Pollux oil with a dry 3M pad. While doing this, I noticed a small area with too much wax buildup. I'm sure I just missed the spot while wiping the second coat with a rag. My fix for this is to use a new sharp razor blade and use it like a card scraper. Simply scrape away layers until everything is level, sand or use a 3M pad, then reapply the finish. This works great for drips or runs and really any clear finish. To hang the shelf, I added a simple French cleat style hanger that is available at most big box stores. It's always a good idea to ensure your mounting screws will not push through the other side of your wood. The way these hangers mount, they hold the piece about a quarter inch away from the wall. So I like to put something on the bottom of this shelf so when it attaches to the wall, it does not sit at an angle. I discovered that these rubber feet I used to use for cutting boards happened to be the perfect thickness. So I mounted one at the, each corner on the bottom of the shelf and it hung perfectly. Well, that is the end of this build. It certainly was not a complicated build, but I wanted to share some of the challenges that popped up during the build and then show you some of my solutions. Thanks for hanging out with me and now get out in your shop and get creative.